Direct from DICE over there in Sweden is Carl Magnuson Trudson's on the line with me. He's the senior producer for Battlefield Bad Company. Carl, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. Now, I'm, I've got to tell you, I know a lot of folks are excited about Battlefield Bad Company. It's available now around the world. Uh, what was it like working on this game? Well, it's been very hectic from time to time. We've been working a long time on it. I mean, we not only created the game, we also built the Frostbite game engine at the same time. So there's been busy days, and there have been very busy days, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, really, the, one, I mean, the, the, the game, there's two parts to the game, the single player and the multiplayer, and I want to talk about those individually. But, mm -hmm. I mean, it goes without saying that the Frostbite engine is really an extraordinary leap ahead in, in technology for the Battlefield series. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. I mean, when we started out the project, we felt that since this was going to be a, um, a console installment only, we felt that in order to take that leap, we wanted to make the most out of the, uh, the next-gen console out there. And uh, when we started this discussion about the product, I mean, this was even before the console showed up. So it was all glorious days when the, the console could do anything. So we aimed very, very high with the technology in the background to make the most out of the engines. Yeah, I mean, and for those people that haven't seen it yet, first of all, there's a demo available for download from Xbox mm -hmm. Live, so you can go ahead and, and, and not only is the demo, I mean, it's got the multiplayer, but you also include a little bit of single player in there as well. Yeah, I mean, the proposition of the game is that it's both. When, I mean, it's the first time in a Battlefield game that we actually had a single player campaign as well, so when we sat down and thought about the demo, we felt, you know what, the, the actual megabyte, gigabyte size of the demo is going to be, be huge, but we really wanted to show everyone both the multiplayer and the single player. The one thing I noticed, I, I, I told you that right before we, we started recording, is I finished the single player a few days ago, and it was just a ton of fun. It really sets you it sets you up nicely for the multiplayer. I mean, often you'll play a single player version of a game, and then you go play the multiplayer, and it feels like it was developed by two different teams, which it, sometimes it was. But mm -hmm. this one, a lot of what I learned in the single player, I was able to take into the multiplayer. So that was actually really exciting. A lot of the weapons. Uh, so mm -hmm. let's 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 talk about the single player for a moment. What can, what can uh, what can fans expect from the single player? Well, I mean, I guess that if you're a hardcore Battlefield fan, there are a couple of things that you actually will definitely recognize in the single player, and that's the, the core mechanic of the game, this, uh, the layer of gameplay, which is what we usually call the sandbox experience, that you have a lot of freedom as a player, and we, we, uh, in the single player we tell them where they need to go and where they need to destroy or what they need to complete objective-wise, but how they do that is completely up to the player, and that's very similar to how you play the multiplayer, that if you want to drive a tank, you want to fly a helicopter, you want to steal a boat and try to run down the enemies or whatever, you, you can do that. That's the freedom you have as a player. And that's, um, that's a very common layer in between both the single player and the multiplayer in that company. Yeah, the multiplayer, uh, the single player, as I said, when I was playing through it, it really, the story, there, there's actually a lot of story here. You guys did a nice job on the story. Yeah, we felt that, I mean, we have done bot matches in, in Battlefield. I mean, Battlefield was a multiplayer game from the beginning, and this is, the, as I said, the first game with a true offline campaign in it. But we felt that we can't just do another bot fight or something like that. We, it was actually two reasons. A, that we wanted a really, really good campaign because we think that that's what the console audience out there demands, pretty much. But it also, for us as game developers, that's what we wanted to do. I mean, we'd never really done this kind of... Um, offline campaign with stories and characters and cinematic uh, pauses in between, etc. So it felt like a natural next thing to take for the franchise. What was it like? You, you talked about how you haven't, you know, for, for generally speaking, you haven't done the campaigns in a true story mode before. What was that like for your for your team for the first time to have to start developing a story? I mean, it, it, we we have quite some people that have been working on this game uh, that have been working with uh, single player games before from other studios or other titles etc but so we had some experience but a lot of it was actually new from from our end when it comes to how we're going to do this and at the same time as that can be a bit of a problem it's also always good to have a couple of fresh eyes on something when you do it and we sat down with the we thought what do we want out of the single player yes we want the similar mechanics as in multiplayer so as you said as you play single player you will learn a lot that sets you up for multiplayer we also came to the conclusion that we wanted a different attitude we wanted you know this kind of that makes it feel a bit different just another not just another run-of-the-mill kind of single player story which is slapped on on top of on something else and so i think it was both a, a pro and a con when it comes to setting up for us, how to how, if you're going to achieve uh, what we wanted with the game? Yeah, as I was playing through the multiplayer, first of all, it was fun with the achievements. You, you threw in as you know some nice random achievements in there that I kind of yeah. smiled as I got them. I don't want to I don't want to provide any spoilers, so I won't give any away. 
but I want to go through how many weapons and how many vehicles are in the single player, and then we'll talk about the multiplayer, because it just feel, felt like I was just always running into something new. Yeah, I mean, Battlefield has always been based around, as I said before, the, the, the choice. There's always a lot to choose from, and that, that also means that there's a lot to choose from, not only in the multiplayer, but in the single player as well. I don't have the exact number here, but I think we have at least something like 50 different handheld weapons and gadgets that you can have in the game. Um, and these are spread out over the five different classes and all these kind of things that you in the multiplayer, the more you rank up, the more things you can unlock. And then vehicle-wise, I think, I think I'm not lying when I say that we have something like 25 different vehicles in the weapons, and this is not including all the different stationary weapons like the, the artillery and the machine guns, etc. Yeah, and there's actually, again, I don't want to give away any spoilers, but there's a vehicle in here that I was completely surprised to run up against. And uh, I'll just describe it as a recreational vehicle. Uh, yeah, it, <laughs> it was one of those things that just got added to the game very late in the process, and well, we all had we all had a lot of fun when we added that one. And when players go through the single player, that that, that object does not exist in the multiplayer, correct? No, it it doesn't. We actually we we were, we didn't have time to do the actual multiplayer um, version of that same map, but uh, we'll see what we can do in the future there. Yeah, it's because I don't want again I don't want to spoil it, but when players re reach that, they'll know exactly what we're talking about. Now let's, let's absolutely let, let's switch over to the multiplayer because there's a lot mm -hmm. of nuances to the multiplayer. I'm noticing that, you know, I find weapons in the single player. There's there's kind of this meta game where you have Enemy to find all these weapons Asia. that people, that the enemies are dropping and so on and so forth. So there's that meta game. But then how does that translate over into the multiplayer? Well, I mean, when you actually find them in the single player, that isn't really connected to the multiplayer because the multiplayer has a very deep persistence, but it isn't directly sure. connected to the single player. And the reason for that is that we want the people, the people that really play online and they, they rank up and they get different, you know, all the points there, we want to reward them with the unlock points. So you actually have to play against human players to get all the weapons that are available. But that means that it's, there's a lot of different things that you can unlock in the game. That would, for instance, if you prefer playing the demolition class, there is several different new shotguns that you can unlock, and there is also gadgets, etc., that you can uh, upgrade your kit with. Yeah, uh, so the weapons, so you talked about the fact that it's always really exciting when you're playing the multiplayer and you get a notification that you've ranked up and you now have another point to quote unquote go spend on some of these unlockables. So it's, mm -hmm. it's you know, it's, it's one of those things where I actually sat at one of the unlockable screens for like five or ten minutes and was like, well, I was so pained at what I wanted to do. You know, where yeah, did you I want to... Yeah, you have to select carefully. Yeah, you have to select very carefully. What are some of those unlocks that we, that we see in terms of not only the weapons, but some of the, some of the equipment, the equips? Yes, some of the gadgets that I can, you know, under the radar make a tip, I mean, it's, it's often good as a player to start unlocking the actual gadgets because each kit has a, a couple of different uh, the gadgets that they can choose from that are pretty powerful. And a couple of examples from uh, the recon class, for instance, which is basically the, the sniper class in the game, they have something called the laser designator, which is the... Um, and a device that you aim at vehicles, hard targets, and you fire a laser beam, and if you keep it pressed and locked for X amount of seconds, you can have some, uh, how do you say in English, uh, heavy ordnance coming in from, from airplanes, etc., bombs being dropped from the sky that you then have to guide in, which, uh, as you unlock that to the recon class, makes it much, much more powerful than what it was before, because now you can actually really take out vehicles as well. Or you have the um, the mortar strike radio for the uh, for the support class that not only makes him uh, a defensive kit but also very offensive because he can order down this shower of mortar rains, which is great against infantry coming up on the uh, when you do especially playing as a defender. Yeah, I mean, there's there's some of those that you go through, and then you've also got the the injector for the infantry, you know, the, the mm -hmm. life injector, which you which you kind of you you're exposed to that in the single player, and you're actually exposed to all of these in the single player, correct? Absolutely. There's uh, all these different uh, elements of the game are presented in the single player, so you get to you know learn how to control it, etc. They maybe not the the tracer dart gun. You don't get to use that much in single player, but that's definitely one of the more hardcore uh, gadgets that we have in the game. Expl um, explain how that works, because I was using that last night. I was a little, I was a little wanted to make sure I'm using it right. Explain how that one works. Yeah, it's one of the the toughest one. It's, it it demands a lot of teamwork actually, but it's very very interesting when you start to use it. it if you play the um, the, the specialist class, meaning that you're very sneaky, you got the silenced weapons and these kind of things, you also have something called the tracer dart gun, and that means that if you sneak up to vehicles and tag them with this, it's got a pretty short range, so you have to get in close to the vehicles as well. But if you then tag them, there's a small um, small thing just giving off signals, which means that anyone playing the demolition class, 
if they zoom in with their uh, RPGs, the, uh, the rocket propelled grenade grenades, they will actually make the grenades homing, meaning that you can fire around corners, you can fire over hills or, or these kind of things. Meaning that if the demolition guy managed to take out a target that's been, um, that's been tanked by a specialist, they both get points. So if you're two people playing in a squad and you really want to have some time, you know, some fun messing around with the enemy, have one of the one of your friends hide by the just by the road or somewhere where all the vehicles drive by. Have him tag them and just fire rockets from wherever you are, and they will home in and destroy that target very quickly. And it'll be one of those moments where you're like, how did what happened? I don't know. I never exactly. even saw him. <laughs> and it looks very nice as well when you see the trail coming in, uh, the trail after the rocket, and it just turns around the corners or whatever it might be. So. <laughs> Now, the, uh, the the other thing about this one is just, as we talked about a little bit earlier, is just the sheer amount of weapons. Now, I, a lot of these weapons, I, I recognize the names, you know, are, are all of these based on real-world weapons? Yes, they are. I mean, it's always been a key thing for, uh, I mean, at least the the Battlefield games that is uh, have a modern-day setting, that uh, we use real weapons. Um, some of them we have to name in different ways, but all of them have the real-life equivalent that they are. Yeah, because it's it's pretty extraordinary. I mean, I've been getting used to the shotguns and some of the other ones. And what was great is uh, is that people may or may not know this. If you downloaded the demo, and mm -hmm. you I believe you got to the third level in the multiplayer, you actually were awarded a weapon for the uh, for the infantry class. Absolutely, it's like a free unlock. You actually get the uh, the Uzi in the game. Yeah, so that that was actually a, a fun discovery as well. So I know a lot of people are doing that, but. I want to I want to uh, shift focus for a moment and talk about the Frostbite engine. We talked about it at the beginning of the interview, but mm. this is really Russian an extraordinary leap in technology way. because if, if, unless you really experience it, and I urge people to go download the demo and, and ultimately get the game, but it's it's really interesting. Basically, you're providing an environment built with this engine that's almost 100% destructible. Correct. Yeah, I mean, that, that was the goal that we had. I mean, not 100% is destructible. I think we've said something about 90% of it. But, but that was the, one of the key goals for this new technology, not just to build another engine that can render it in higher resolution or just more prettier or with more effects or something like that. We felt that in order to make it into a true next-gen game, whatever that means def definition-wise, but just yeah. to make it into something really new and fresh and innovative, there needs to be something that actually changed how you play the actual game. And that's, that's what we felt as developers, that the natural ne next step for a shooter, and especially for Battlefield, was to add the, uh, the destruction in the game, meaning that all the things that used to be static, you know, if you run up to a small tent, for instance, in all the other games, you know, that's completely, you can't just shoot through it, you can't destroy it, if you hide in there, the tank can't run you over or something like that. All that just goes out the window now with the, with the new engine and that company, because that tent provides pretty much no cover for anyone firing at it and will completely disappear. Yeah, I mean, I was, the first time I noticed it, when it was actually in the beta, you guys did a beta earlier in the year, um, mm. And I assumed you collect all sorts of data from that, and you rolled that into the multiplayer, correct? Absolutely. Uh, but in the beta, it was the first time when I was standing there in a building, I was like on the second floor, and, and literally uh, the entire side of the building was blown off, and I was uh, my what I thought was a safe house no longer a safe house. I was exposed, and I was running for cover. And it, until you experience that, it's pretty interesting to see how how that's used in the gameplay, because not only in the single player, but it really dramatically impacts the single player and obviously the multiplayer as well, because you mm -hmm. get to make your own path. Yeah, it, I mean, the, the problem that you had in games before, that if you run down that street, you know that there's going to be 10 snipers down the end of the street, and they're all going to be watching that street where you, they know that people are going to run and be running down. I mean, just use, the, uh, for instance, the underslung rifle grenade launcher that you have on the uh, assault class. I mean, they can blow holes in the walls and just go from house to house to like mouse their way through instead of going down that very dangerous sniper alley or something like that. But it definitely changes how you play the actual game. And I think when people really dig into, especially the multiplayer, they will start to realize that it, it does really change how you play it. And you have to think differently because if, if you're a sniper, for instance, you're standing in a window and if somebody spots you, you won't really have that much cover if they have the right firepower to just take out the wall. And if, if that doesn't kill you, they can open fire because you don't have any, any cover anymore. So. It, it, it leads you to play in a different way, where you actually you move, you shoot, you move, and you shoot. You, you keep much more mobile than what you've done before, because that, that will help you stay alive longer. Yeah, you really have no choice. I also noticed that as the game advances, as you're, as you're, whether you're the defenders or the attackers, that the area that was, the, you know, the currently or the previously contested area um, is just 
destroyed. I mean, the the buildings are blown to bits. The there's mm -hmm. there's um there's craters everywhere from you know the, the the bombs being called in. It's it's really extraordinary to go back and revisit what was once a nice pristine farmhouse is now Good just work. decimated. Yeah, I like that you say that. No, I mean that was a key part of the art direction of the game that we wanted this before and after feeling. So we have these rural, nice little Eastern European villages, and then we just tear everything apart, and we got uh, ground destruction, all the vegetation is blown out, all the houses are burning, and all the walls are gone, and all the objects have been destroyed. I mean, that, that was the feeling that we wanted to actually just get that feeling that after the, the battle had been uh, going through this area, it's going to be completely destroyed. Now, on the multiplayer, you're supporting up to 24, 24 players on a server, correct? On a That's game. right, yeah. I want to talk, can you walk me through some of the maps? Because I, I, I played a map last night, I believe it's called Valley Run, which was just mm -hmm. a blast. I completely enjoyed that map. Yeah, it's, it's one of the favorites. One, It was one of the, actual the first maps that we started prototyping here. It's an... Um, it's a, it's, a, it's a very rural with the area with a lot of farms. You could say that it's some kind of Eastern European settings, and it has a lot of a lot of vehicle combat, but also places where you can have some pretty nice infantry fights, Sensor both for uh, close combat experts like the specialists, but also uh, especially recon people and the support class. Um, it, it's one of those really, really nice maps where the Gold Rush game mode comes to its best, I almost dare to say. Yeah, and uh, can you just kind of quickly run through maybe some of the other maps that we can see in rotation? Absolutely. I mean, uh, looking at it from a, a bit of a distance, we have two different kinds of maps, which we have tried to create to cater for two different needs of the, of the player. And so we have maps that are more open, that has a lot more uh, vehicle combat, but we also have uh, maps that are much more tighter, infantry-based, where it's more close combat and not so many vehicles. Um, if you've played Oasis, for instance, in the demo, with one of our desert maps, uh, it's one of the vehicles oriented one to have a lot of vehicles, uh, helicopters, boats, tanks, light tanks, jeeps, you name it. Um, but it also has in the in the latter part of the of the map, you also also have a pretty tight urban area where the tank has less of an impact because it's so much houses just all around. It. Um, we have final ignition, which is a tighter infantry map, uh, also in the desert setting, which is quite a, a lethal level because there's so much, uh, it's mi in the middle of a refinery, so there's a lot of explosive things placed everywhere, so you have to watch out at the attacker which route to take, because if the defenders might take out a gas silo or something like that, that will prove for some very devastating shockwaves going through and might take you out as you approach the target, so to um, I mean, all together there's eight different maps to choose from, and they span they span uh, similar settings that you will experience in the actual uh, single-player campaign as well. So there are maps that are set out in Russia and Eastern Europe, and also in the more like uh, e um, like desert, Middle Eastern kind of setting. What what, you, what can you give some tips to somebody who is is buying the game? Maybe they just bought it this weekend. They're going online, and there's already people with some of the unlocks. What's the best way to kind of get started and, and have a little bit of early success in the multiplayer? I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to tell everyone to play as a team because team play comes often after a while when you get more used to it. But if there's one thing that could help you out in the beginning, because you, even if you don't start a squad yourself and start playing with your friends immediately, you will automatically be assigned to a squad. And um, you could, in order to help you out a bit, just follow someone else around in the actual game. Because not only with that, you know, they will show you towards the objective, etc., but it will give you that additional firepower against that enemy that you come across. Um, so when you, in the beginning, when you just oriented yourself around the map, that can probably be a good idea. And don't forget to use the VoIP in the game, because that really helps you out. You can talk together with your squad, and you can say, you know, point out the enemies, and that will really help you out in the beginning. Um, the other tips will probably be that the, the first couple of uh, ranks you'll rank up pretty quickly and you get like one or two unlock points in the beginning there. Spend those on the actual gadgets. Um, and depending on which kind of kit you uh, the class you like to play, you can select the gadget for that one. So if you like to play the, the most basic assault soldier, for instance, unlock the health injector so you can heal yourself. Or if you play the support class, may class unlock the mortar strike or something like that. Because those are very powerful devices that are uh, more important to have before you start unlocking more weapons and these kind of things. Yeah, I mean, it's it's that, that those are some good tips. Now, before I let you go, I I got to talk to you. Tell me tell me what's going on with conquest mode. Conquest mode. Well, I mean, this is something that was very based on the uh, the beta feedback that we got a while ago when we had that going on. 
<clears throat> I mean, a lot of the uh, the old school fans of Battlefield were a bit disappointed that we didn't have Conquest in the game. We're shipping this with the brand new game of that we like to call Gold Rush. Um, so we listened to that feedback, and we have now. Uh, I mean, uh, we decided to actually put that uh, make that available for the uh, everyone that buys the game. And uh, the team have now been uh, busy here for a couple of months of uh, just creating that, and it's almost ready to be shipped off for uh, testing and all these kind of things we have to do before we um, get it out to the public. Um, so sometime now, in, uh, after the summer, it's going to be available for everyone that bought the game, and it's going to be available for free, of course. Uh, and it's going to be the old classical Conquest gameplay game mode where you run around and you capture flags. and. Uh, Comparing it to Gold Rush, it's much more open because you get, the players get spread out over different bases. So it's not it's not really as action-packed as the Gold Rush game mode, which uh, I, I guess suits uh, a lot of the uh, different players as well. So I hope everyone is going to enjoy that. I know people are going to be really excited about that. You know, because it's it's first of all, I want to congratulate you guys on shipping a, a, a wonderful game. It's always it's always uh, hard to ship a game. You guys shipped it, and it's getting it's getting great reviews. It really is. So I want to congratulate you on that for really thank you. Re really taking the Battlefield uh, series and, and kind of making it next gen for us. I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> I mean, that was the whole idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, well I'm really glad for that. Thank you. So listen, Carl Madison, uh, you're the senior producer for Battlefield Bad Company. We'll see you online. Thank you so much, and, uh, and we'll talk to you soon. Absolutely. Thank you.